Follow Lang Focus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lang Focus channel, and my name is Paul. Today's topic is a language that some of you have probably never heard of, but it's a fascinating topic and one that's definitely worth a look. The topic is Quechua. And in Quechua, the language is sometimes referred to as Runasimi, which means the people's language. If we include all varieties of Quechua, it is by far the most widely spoken native language in South America, with between 8 and 10 million speakers spread out across Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador, as well as northern Argentina and southern Colombia. Spanish is now the dominant language in all of those countries, but of course that wasn't always the case. Even if you haven't heard of Quechua, you've most definitely heard of the Inca civilization, whose capital was located at Cusco in present-day Peru, and whose empire was the largest in the Americas in the pre-colonial period. And as their empire expanded, the language spread to new areas because it became the general language, or the lingua franca of the areas under the empire's control. The origin of Quechua is debated, with some people saying that it originated in the Cusco area, and others saying that it originated in the central coastal area of Peru. Throughout the time of Inca rule, Quechua was not a written language. Records were only kept in quipus, a system of knotted strings that serve as symbols or mnemonic reminders of information. Quipus are not fully understood, but they are not thought to represent the sounds or the structure of Quechua. Instead, they simply provide reminders of information to be passed down orally. Quechua did not become a written language until the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire, which took place between 1532 and 1572. Quechua continued to be spoken as a lingua franca after the Spanish conquest, and the Catholic Church used Quechua in its efforts to convert people, spreading the language even further. The oldest written record of Quechua is a book written in 1560 by the missionary Domingo de Santo Tomás called Grammar or Art of the General Language of the Indians of the Royalty of Peru. After the Tupac Amaru Rebellion of 1780, the colonial power banned Quechua from public use. Even Quechua texts that were pro-colonial or pro-Catholic were banned, and the language began to decline. After the Spanish-American Wars of Independence from 1808 to 1833, Quechua had a brief revival, but it has gradually lost prestige and declined in use. One of the main reasons for the decline of Quechua is the use of Spanish as the language of education and of the media, and the use of Spanish as the main language of national economies. And with economic development comes increased urbanization. When people move from their local area to a major city, it's necessary to speak Spanish with the majority of people who don't speak Quechua. Spanish is often thought of as the language of prestige and of economic opportunity, so speakers of Quechua, or people whose parents speak Quechua, often see it as something low prestige and something to avoid. Some Quechua-speaking parents avoid speaking Quechua with their children at home and instead speak to them in Spanish. Even in researching this video and in looking for volunteers to read the Quechua samples, some people told me that they themselves don't speak Quechua, but that their friend's parents speak Quechua, or that their uncle or aunt speak Quechua. Peru was the first country to make Quechua an official language in 1975, along with Ayamara and other native languages. In Bolivia, it's been an official language along with 35 other native languages since 2006. In Bolivia, each regional government is officially bilingual, choosing both Spanish and one of the other official languages. In Ecuador, Quechua has had semi-official status since 2009. Spanish is the main official language, but Quechua and Shuar are referred to as official languages for intercultural relations. Even though Quechua began to be written after the Spanish conquest, it is still mainly a spoken language and it isn't really written all that much, and there are various different standards of orthography. This is partly because Quechua is spoken differently in different places. Quechua is not really a single language, rather it is a series of closely related groups of dialects, and those groups of dialects that have a high level of mutual intelligibility can be considered languages. If there were one standard written language that was widely accepted and widely used throughout all the different areas, then it might be able to be called a single language because of that unifying force, but there is no such standard language. Quechua is divided into two major dialect categories, Quechua 1 and Quechua 2 which are fairly distinct from each other, but there's a dialect continuum within each category. Quechua 1 is spoken in central Peru and is sometimes referred to as Waiwash. Quechua 2, which is sometimes called Wampu, can be further subdivided into three dialect groups. There's Quechua 2A in northern Peru, Quechua 2B, northern Quechua, also known as Quichua, 
which is spoken mainly in Ecuador and southern Colombia, and Quechua 2C, Southern Quechua, which includes the Quechua spoken around Cusco, in Bolivia, and in Argentina. Southern Quechua is the most commonly spoken, and the Cusco dialect is often seen as the de facto standard variety of Quechua, even though it really isn't. The dialects within each of these groups are largely intelligible, and there is some degree of intelligibility between the different groups. The lowest degree of intelligibility is between Quechua 1 and Quechua 2, even if both varieties are located in Peru. The difference between Quechua 1 and Quechua 2 seems to have resulted from a split from Proto-Quechua. The main differences between them are in vocabulary and morphology. There are differences in pronunciation too, but there are also pronunciation differences within each group. So what is Quechua like? Let's look at some of the features of Quechua focusing on Southern Quechua. Syntax. Quechua is an SOV language. Subject, object, verb. Let's take a look at an example sentence. Maria wasitaruang. This means, Maria builds a house. Word for word it's, Maria, house, object marker, build, third person singular. You can see that the basic order is subject, object, verb. The subject comes at the beginning of the sentence when there's an explicit subject. But it's possible to have a complete sentence without the subject at the beginning, like, wasitaruan. The n suffix at the end is a subject suffix, so it's often not necessary to have a subject at the beginning. Agglutination. One of Quechua's main features is that it's highly agglutinative. Let's look at an example of agglutination using a noun. Misi means cat. Let's add the plural marker. Kuna. Misi kuna. Means cats or the cats. There's no definite article in Quechua, so it depends on the context. Let's add the word for with. Wang. Misi kuna wang. Means with the cats. But let's move this over and add a different suffix meaning your. Iki. Misikikunawang means with your cats. And if we take away one, we have Misikikuna, which simply means your cats. One more example using the word for road. Nyam. Add the plural marker kuna, and we have Nyankuna, roads. Then add the word for on, pi. Nyankunapi means on the roads. Let's remove the word at the end and slide this over. And again, we can add a possessive suffix, this time inku, meaning there. But it's awkward to have these two nasal sounds right next to each other with no vowel. So you add ni, a euphonic particle that has no meaning. So we have nyaninku kuna, which means their roads. Then add that postposition p again, and we have nyaninku kunapi, which means on their roads. Let's look at an example of agglutination using a verb. We're starting with uyari, the infinitive of the verb meaning to hear. If we take away the y at the end, we now have the verb stem to which we can add suffixes. First add ni, a subject pronoun suffix meaning I. So uyarini means I hear. Let's move this over and we can add a past tense suffix to the stem, rha. Now we have uyarilhani, which means I heard. Another example meaning I am learning Quechua. Runasimita yachakusani. Runasimi is the word for Quechua, as I said earlier, and ta is the object marker suffix which shows that runasimi is the object. But let's focus on the verb. Yacha is the stem of the verb meaning to know. Ku is a suffix which makes a verb reflexive or done to oneself. So yachaku means learn. Sa is a progressive suffix which shows that the action is in progress now. And ni is the subject pronoun suffix meaning I. One feature of Quechua that will be unfamiliar to speakers of many languages is topic and focus markers. The topic marker indicates what the topic or theme of a sentence is. The topic is always some information that has been previously mentioned or something that is presupposed. The focus marker indicates new information or information that is not presupposed or it shows some point of contrast. The topic marker is ka or ha and the focus marker is m or n or mi. Let's look at a sentence. This means who built the house? Word for word it's who, focus marker, house, object marker, build, past tense, third person singular subject. Here the focus marker is attached to the question word to focus on the new information that is being requested. Here's a possible answer. This means it was Pirdu who built the house. Word for word it's Pirdu, focus marker, house, object marker, topic marker, build, past suffix, third person singular subject. The focus marker is attached to Pirdu because he is the new information being introduced. The topic marker is attached to house after the object marker 
because the house is the ongoing theme that was already introduced earlier in the conversation. Evidential markers. That focus marker has another function to show direct evidence that something is true. This is a kind of evidential, an indicator of the source of information. Another evidential marker is cha, which shows inference, shi, or sh, which shows hearsay, something that you heard. Let's look at an example sentence. Paramu shanmi. This means it is raining. Word for word it's rain, cislocative particle, which indicates movement towards the speaker. Progressive suffix, third person singular subject, evidential marker. This evidential, mi, indicates that the speaker has observed firsthand that it's raining. The next sentence is exactly the same, except for the evidential marker at the end. Paramu shanja. This means something like, I think it is raining. The marker, cha, indicates that the speaker infers or guesses that it's raining. The next sentence, paramu shanshi, means something like, I heard it's raining. The evidential particle, shi, indicates that the speaker has been told by someone that it's raining, but they have no first-hand evidence of it. Spanish loanwords. Quechua uses a large number of loanwords from Spanish, as much as one-third of Quechua's vocabulary, depending on the variety of Quechua and the area. Here are some examples. Cervisa, from Spanish cerveza. Chufir, from Spanish chofer, meaning driver. Escuela, the Spanish word for school. And libro, the Spanish word for book, instead of the Quechua word patada. As you can see, Quechua is a fascinating language and one that is deeply connected with the history and the culture of its speakers and of the countries where it is spoken. The decline of Quechua is unfortunate and the loss of Quechua would be a very sad thing indeed. Perhaps the key to preserving Quechua is truly bilingual schooling and more focus on Quechua literacy. The question of the day, if there are any native speakers of Quechua watching, how often do you speak Quechua? And how often do you speak Spanish? Does it depend on the situation? And for other people, do you notice any features of Quechua that you've noticed in other languages? Be sure to follow Lang Focus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And again, I'd like to say thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters, especially these excellent people right here on the screen for their monthly pledges. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.